Hi, nice to meet you. C could, could you tell me who you are, please? Absolutely. I'm Dan Hendrickson. I'm the Vice President of Business Development at Astrobotic. Okay. What is Astrobotic? What is it? So we are a commercial lunar payload delivery service. So we're kind of like a DHL to the moon. We take payloads from around the world, mm -hmm. integrate them on our Peregrine Lunar Lander, which you see here, and then deliver those payloads to the surface of the moon. Once we get to the surface, we provide power and communications for all the payloads so they okay. can carry out the various missions that they care to do once they're on the surface. Is it a, to, to scale? This it model, is, is it, yes. Yeah. So this is so. the one-to-one -one scale engineering mock-up. So yeah. this is what the vehicle will look like. Uh, all the payloads will be integrated on these, these deck plates that you see here. Oh, all right. And so uh, the way to kind of think about it is kind of like it's a DHL truck. You have a variety of different kinds of packages that yeah. do a lot of different kinds of things. Uh, they vary in size and, and in volume uh, and mass. And then uh, they're integrated on this modular spacecraft. And this is actually a product line. This design will actually fly over and over again uh, okay. in the future. So we'll have up to uh, at least five missions with this Peregrine Lunar Lander. Okay, well, and, and what can we uh, can we send to the moon exactly? Do you have examples? Sure. So uh, there's a, a wide variety of, of different demand sources for lunar payloads. Uh, there's technology demonstrators. Uh, there's science exploration, even marketing. Uh, there's a, a group really? out of Japan that's actually sending a marketing payload. So that's really oh. kind of an exciting new use of the moon. Um, we also have the capability for individuals to also send payloads to the moon. Very tiny. Yeah. Uh, through a program called the DHL Moon Box. Okay. Uh, so just as simply as if you go online and, and purchase a reservation uh, for sending something all across the world via DHL, you can similarly do it with our mission. They're very, very tiny, so you can send, like for example, a tiny picture or a pendant, some kind of memento, uh, and it can go to the moon. And every time you see the moon in, out in, in the night sky, you'll be able to, to see where your, your keepsake is for eternity. So I, I can send something to the moon Absolutely. if it's tiny. That's right, yeah. Individuals, companies, governments, universities, space agencies, um, we are making the moon accessible to the entire world. Okay, so do you, do you already have customers? Do you really plan some, some missions? Absolutely, right so we have 10 signed payloads right now, uh, which is fantastic, one of which is actually the Mexican yeah. Space Agency. So they've signed on for a reservation of service. Uh, they'll be sending the first Latin American payload to the surface of the moon. Uh, University out of Mexico City is actually building that payload for the Mexican Space Agency. So it's a really exciting capacity building payload for them to be sending. Mm -hmm. um, and then also we have a corporate sponsorship with DHL, which is yeah. fantastic. Uh, again, we have that thematic connection between uh, DHL sending packages around the world for people. Uh, similarly, we're sending, of course, essentially packages to the moon. And so uh, it's a great partnership between our two organizations. So this is for science? Uh, science, exploration, okay. marketing, uh, there's just a whole variety of, of different activities uh, that folks have been wanting to do at the moon for a long time. In fact, uh, it's been 40 years since the United States has soft yeah. landed on the surface of the moon. Mm -hmm. um, so over those, those 40 years, there's been a great demand that's been building in the U.S. and then even beyond. Uh, there's only been the U.S., China, and the former Soviet Union that have yes. landed on the moon in the first place. Yes. Um, so we really want to expand that access for everyone to have the ability to send things to the moon and to operate their experiments, their payloads, uh, their various activities. So you may be the, the first private company to do this. Absolutely. Yep. And, and, and when, when will be this first mission? In 2020? 19. 19. That's right. Yep. Yes, so right. it's coming up very soon. Yeah. Uh, and it's very exciting. We uh, we're currently progressing on our technical team with our preliminary design review and progressing toward other technical milestones coming up very soon. Mm -hmm. um, I should also note that we have NASA as an official partner of ours. Uh, there's a program called Lunar Catalyst in which their engineers can actually work directly on the development of our vehicle. Um, so all of our customers get not only the benefit of Astrobotic, uh, mm -hmm. but also the wisdom, the expertise, and the experience of some of the world's best space engineers coming from NASA, of course. <laughs> um, we also have a partnership with Airbus DS out of Bremen, yeah. which is also fantastic. They bring a lot of uh, additional experience and, and expertise. Um, so we really feel like we've got a world-class team to make this a reality. And um, which kind of rocket will you use? So we're going to be announcing that this summer, actually. Oh, okay. so, but Sorry. I can't say. No, it's totally fine. Um, so that announcement will be coming. Uh, but in the meantime, I can say that this vehicle will fly as a secondary payload. Um, okay. So okay. Uh, yeah. it'll be flying on a vehicle that, that is uh, launching a primary payload, another yeah. satellite. Yeah. Uh, and will sit essentially what more or less amounts to the, the trunk of the launch vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have a question 
for marketing. How can we do marketing on the moon? Uh, it's just sure. Like, just so we don't yeah, absolutely. know how. Well, uh, you might be able to see over here, we actually have a DHL logo yes. right on yes. the, the lander itself. So yes. um, you can imagine that the first images from the first commercial lunar landing will be uh, of historic nature, all right. you know, at the level of Apollo 11 as far as a new era in space. I um, think so. So yeah. that's a, a fantastic opportunity for brands to have an exposure level that is really once in a generation opportunity to have their, their brands featured. Okay, and do, did you think about ethical questions? Sure, absolutely. I mean, um, we're, we're going to be good stewards on the, on the lunar surface. Um, you know, we're going to be very careful to, to observe all the important standards and all the important uh, planetary protection uh, yeah. guidelines that, that NASA requires for, from all of their missions. Um, we're going to comply with the Outer Space Treaty and all of the other uh, important federal U.S. statutes that we have to comply with for, for launch, launching out of the U.S. commercially. Um, so we're going to comply with all of those, uh, those laws and then also the, the ethical guidelines as well as operations. Operating on, on the surface of the moon. Do you dream yourself to go to the moon? I would love would to you go like to the moon. <laughs> Absolutely. This is the next best thing, though. Oh. Uh, and really, this is what enables the future to, for allow, to allows the human presence to grow on the moon. So uh, we really start with this as a basic capability. We need mm -hmm. a low-cost cargo transportation service to be up and running, mm -hmm. uh, to be regularly delivering payload. And then over time, that will create access for everyone uh, by building infrastructure and building uh, all the capabilities that are going to be needed for future people to, to go to the moon. So this is the first building block to creating the next human presence on the moon. <laughs> Great. Uh, did you hear about the the European uh, Space Agency project of the Moon Village? Absolutely. What do you think about it? We are incredibly excited by the Moon Village. We're, <laughs> I am too. We're, we're, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're ready to, to help make that a reality. Um, when it comes to, to a village or pioneering, um, you know, transportation and logistics are one of the first important pieces to set up and you need to be able to rely upon those in order to properly pioneer in any location, whether it's Earth or Moon or anywhere. Uh, so we believe that this is a fundamental capability that will help enable uh, uh, Jan Werner's vision of the Moon Village and we're, we stand ready to support that. Oh, great. And when you say that you, you will send some some missions regularly on the moon, mm -hmm. what is regularly? I sure. Uh, yeah, so for our first few missions, we'll be flying about once a year, once every two years or so. Okay, okay. Um, so we're, we're going to start in a, in a building block approach and do this in a very technically credible, uh, program, uh, mature program sort of way. And do you choose the location of the moon or is it the customer then? The customers ultimately choose. decide. So okay. uh, because we're carrying a diverse collection of payloads on each mission, um, we consult with our customers very closely and have very close dialogues about where they want to go yeah. and what they want to accomplish. So all of our missions are, are driven by uh, customer needs ultimately. Okay, where do you want to go? I, what, what do you? Yeah, so, so I what would, would love like to, to see. Yeah, so so I think on the first mission, I want to go to a for I want our vehicle and and, and we will be going to a, a, a very uh, a simple long flat plane yeah, in order to sure. safely demonstrate the capability in the service. Of course. And and help understand help folks understand around the world how the vehicle and the service works. Beyond that, I think there's some really exciting regions of the moon that we should be sending spacecraft to as the soon as South possible. Pole. South Pole, <laughs> North Pole, there's yeah. uh, permanently shadowed regions of the moon that have water mm -hmm. ice, which could be used for fuel and life support at some point. Um, there's also lunar caves on yeah. the moon, which is an incredible discovery that's relatively new, um, could be used for a future human settlement. Mm -hmm. um, you could have protection from radiation and solar, uh, or sorry, temperature variants on the surface. So the caves offer a, a great potential uh, for mm -hmm. future explorers. Uh, and then also the, the far side of the moon. Um, there yeah, hasn't been uh, a soft landed spacecraft on the far side of the moon, moon since the, the Soviet Union did it. Mm -hmm. uh, or actually, that may not even be true. I think actually no. there, there hasn't been one no, on no, the no, far no, side. Never. Yeah, my apologies. Yeah. Um, so that really poses a, a unique opportunity to learn a whole new collection of, of a whole new uh, understanding of the moon in a way that we, we just have never had access to at the surface. So uh, the moon really has so many regions worth exploring. Um, if we look back to, to previous missions, whether robotic or human, many of them were kind of at the mid-latitude part yeah. of the moon, on the yeah. front side. Even the uh, Chinese if you one. Will. That's right. Yeah. And so uh, that that's really uh, just us scratching the surface when it comes to understanding the moon and also understanding how we can use the moon and how we can make the moon uh, uh, useful for future exploration uh, and help enable human exploration beyond Earth. Thank you for the dream. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for coming by.